This is the Silt vs. Role-Playing Game, A God Must Feed, Part 13. We have one active assignment, our last active assignment, The Bowered Companion. Your question is, uh, how is this god vulnerable? Resolve the assignment by destroying the god or otherwise neutralizing the threat it poses. That will allow you to retake this trade road. That's a complexity four. You have five clues. One clue I did not give you last time, but I'm going to give it to you now. Basically, Theo, um, Heston, the waiter slash cook slash busboy, tells you that he found a pair of hiking boots and a backpack neatly tucked under a tree. A few barefoot prints in the dirt can be seen walking away from the bundle. Um, he found that and thinks maybe it's connected to the disappearances that have been happening on the trade road. I have put that clue in the thing. Because you got such a good role, um, there's no more conspiracy clues to give, but I am instead going to give you something for your altar, which is going to be called Blessing of the Burger Finger. So you have Blessing of the Burger Finger on your altar. Have fun with that. And uh, Jasper, you got your last clue from the uh, from Ellis Hunter, who I believe is the mayor of Alm. Let me check. I believe so. Yeah, he's like a yeah, he's a local politico, and that was the hammock wrapped around a body, possibly like a spider capturing a fly. And so that's sort of the deal with your loan assignment. Uh, the previous assignment that was active was the Skyward Sprawl, but Sedna and Pele managed to resolve that one. Taking a look at the custodians. And uh, Sedna, Jasper, all have, they both have three conditions each. Pele has none. Pele never has conditions. And Theo has two. So that is this, the condition check-in. Any questions or anything before we go? Before we continue? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> pointed out in the chat is that Pele's, Pele, got, uh, Pele got credit for <laughs> Skyward Sprawl despite not doing much for it. Um, I think what I want to do is I want to set up the journey scene or the journey phase that Sedna and Pele are going to be in, and then we'll take a quick break so you all can think about your answers to the journey scene, and then we'll come right back and do it. The journey scene is going to be a roadside shrine. You've often encountered small shrines in your travels, piles of stones, wreckage, Fragments of former lives arranged with intention. They might be memorials, offerings, even traps for unwary travelers, luring them to a hungry god desperate for a scrap of worship. Along this stretch of lonely road, you notice more of them than usual. We have four paint the scene prompts, each of which are done in order, one per player. And you do them in order, and the last player essentially defines the god based off the previous player's answers. So if you're if you're that last player or if you're if you're anyone but the first one, you have to be a little bit flexible in what you say because you have to build off what the last person said. We are going to kick off with um uh chaotic, you can have the first prompt. Describe the shrine you notice, what materials have been arranged and how. Alex, you can have the second prompt. Does it appear to have been inter interacted with since? Amanda, you can have the third prompt. How does the landscape respond? And Wes, you can define what kind of god you believe the shrine evokes. Uh, invokes, do you know its name? For your journey move, if you wish to invoke it, Pele and Sedna, you might be inspired by recall a time. What small act of worship did you perform in a place no one else could see? We also have a special rule available for this particular journey scene. If the custodians choose to interact with the shrine by leaving an offering, examining it for information, or destroying it, they trigger the revelation move. In addition to whatever else we bargain for on the revelation move, on a hit, you also encounter a clue in the form of an omen. 
unusual reactions in the environment, a divine manifestation, a sign left by other worshipers or something else. So you could get a clue from the journey move. You could get a clue from interacting with the shrine. And that would put you at seven clues quite suddenly on Powered Companion. So it really could just be Sedna and Pele riding into town and saying, look what we found, guys. And then you all go to resolving the assignment. So I'm going to clip the text of this roadside shrine for you all to consider. Let's take a... Um, it's a luxurious break, but let's do it because Sedna and Pele also have to think about their scene they're going to have together. Let's take a 10 minute break and that'll give you time to read through the prompts, think about your things, uh, confer with each other if you want to, but also to set up what your uh, journey move is going to look like, Sedna and Pele. So I'll see you all in 10. Okay. Roadside Shrine. Uh, Kadic, please describe the shrine that you notice, or not you, but Pele and Sedna notice. What materials have been arranged and how? Uh, it's effectively looks like uh, one of those uh, pre-use libraries and whatnot, where you would put like little books in and take books out. Uh, in, but instead of there being like little books, there is little little plushies of like animals with like all sorts of like different colors of fur and whatnot, and just little like notes that people have left behind of like assuring like tra travelers by that they can do things with their life and that they're not stuck in any sort of way. Fantastic, Alex. Does it appear to have been interacted with since? No. Uh, in fact, all of the, all these like plushies and things are just filthy and soaked through and mildewing and molding and falling apart and the wood of the cubbies is rotting. It has not been interacted with for quite some time. Interesting. Amanda, how does the landscape respond? The landscape, as the the stuffies have been sort of decomposing. The landscape has actually been changed by the stuffies. The colors that are faded on these stuffies, the multicolors, are fading into the grass and fading into the dirt. So you can see this multicolored dirt in like a circle around the shrine as if things are, the colors are melting out of it. So Wes, what kind of God is this? Do you know its name? So with this roadside shrine, all of these plushies blending in with the landscape, these colors spilling and things busting out of it, sometimes people, those that leave something alongside of it, something that drop a care or a worry and leave a an object of attachment to someone that they lost, uh, invokes the name of this god uh, that... Uh, does not have just one single form, but is the form of many. Uh, it is a form of what people have described, multiple children gathered together. Almost, they seem distinctly different in clothing, but if you look closer, it's almost like they've rat kinged together in a like combination of mangled um, like car parts, but it's their own human body parts that have been fused together and those around the area uh call them uh they of the much too soon uh and leave uh behind trinkets of those that they lost typically children those that have been gone taken from us much too soon but they're never forgotten um and this god is a reminder of those that you lose too soon in life and that you should never forget them ever fucking dark but also Poignant in its way, in its silt versus e way. Pele, Sedna, the scene is yours. Did Pele and Sedna travel by motorcycle with sidecar? You have both cars right now. We have both cars? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. There would not be room for Sedna because uh, Theo is with us uh, in the sidecar. Which... We have not addressed yet. Yeah, I think um, Sedna 
gets out of the car to, to stretch a bit, looks down at this shrine and sort of kicks at the dirt where it's it's colored. It's very rainbow-y, uh, kind of scowling a bit. Pele, do you see this? I do. How many of these shrines are just up and down the roads doing who knows what for who knows who? Just feeding off passersby. I'd say too many, but they're there for good reason. For good reason? But to feed random gods? Just starve them. <laughs> Knock down all the shrines. Starve all the gods. Why do we keep putting up with this? Why do we keep losing? Why do we keep losing those that are close to us? Why do we keep losing those that we do not know and that we will never know? There are countless dead that I have come across that I do not know their names, but I think of them. Loss is a part of life. Indeed. But have you noticed that whenever a god is around, there seems to be a lot more loss. I want to kick over this shrine. Just kick it over. Move triggered. This is going to be the revelation move. <clears throat> what do you phrase is going to happen if you if this goes badly? Whatever god this is, and I don't think I'm familiar enough with this god to know what it is. Like I don't know it just by looking at the shrine. Um, whatever it is, it's going to come and feed on me. Um, it's worse than that. You will both have to immediately deal with a hallowed saint of the god. And this is going to be with whether you like it or not, this is communion. Yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> Let me take a look at your, this is what gods do and disgusted and overconfident. Yeah, you're also at disadvantage. <laughs> oh yeah, you, you are absolutely, you are 100% kicking the hornet's nest here. Lovely, it's disadvantage and my communion is minus one. So this is gonna be great. <laughs> it's gonna go great, I feel like. Uh, actually, that's a seven. Very well. <sighs> I don't remember how the move works. Hold on <laughs> a second. I promise I wrote the game. Uh, I will tell you how your actions leave you vulnerable. No, that's Revelation. That's... Yeah, we're doing we're doing the Revelation. That's Revelation move. Yeah, I'll tell you how your actions leave you vulnerable. You can choose to back. No, no, that's that's the Veiled move version, isn't it? Uh, if you look at row cell A eighty one. Sorry, A83 on the spreadsheet. Yeah. It's got the... I just wonder, I, I, do we have the wrong text on this? Uh, I think we have the text on the character keeper. No, that's wrong. Uh, no. Oh, yeah, this text is wrong because it says okay. the keeper will tell you how your actions leave you vulnerable and you can choose to back down or go through. That's not how that works. Like you, you are It is absolutely happening because you chose to go through with it already. Um, yeah, because it's, it, no, it's that's 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 the, that's, the, that's the that's the text of the day move in all games or in the veil move. Yeah, is I... yeah, it's it's on the when you get a when you get a um a seven to nine on the day move, it's like the keeper presents you and says, "Here's the what's going to happen. Here's how you're going to be vulnerable if you do choose to go through with it still." And then you uh, get to decide. Hold on here, mm -hmm. because this is not no, the veil move. It's the revelation. It's revelation oh, the re move. oh. Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. we were talking about the revelation. The character My keeper bad. is wrong. Yeah, we gotcha. need to make it. We need to leave a note for. Gotcha, for gotcha. Ben, uh, I thought we were character... talking about the veiled move. Yeah, My the char... bad. The character keeper is not correct because the character keeper version of the seven to nine, or the the actual seven to nine, should say you do it or hold steady. But there is a complication or cost. I describe mm. what it looks like. Mm -hmm. So there's no yeah. like it's automatic. Yeah. Um, your opportunity to back out is before you roll dice, right? Yeah. So, um, 
Note for Ben. <laughs> uh, if anyone remembers, tell Ben, please, because I will probably forget. Um, so, complication or cost? Complication or cost is, I think the angel still appears, but you can have an opportunity to escape and not have to deal with it. But you're going to lose the clue on the vulnerable move. Yeah, that's fair. You still get the clue from kicking the shrine over because you're okay. entitled to that. But you're going to lose the vulnerable move clue. Not vulnerable move. What is it? Journey it's move. the journey move. Journey move. Yeah, journey move. You hear in the distance. Well, there's like a little, there's like a ditch, okay? Like the shrine's there and there's like a ditch and the ditch sort of goes down a ways and there's a little bit of tree cover around so you can't quite see down into the ditch, but you can hear. <coughs> Except it's that times like a dozen <coughs> and you see rising up out of the ditch a mangled grotesque fusion of child bodies crawling up out of the ditch it actually it doesn't really crawl it sort of like just thrusts its bulk forward so that some of the little feet and hands can get purchased along the side of the ditch and just clamor up. But you hear their horrible little bleeding voices, broken bleeding voices. You all can deal with it and get your clue from the journey move or you can run. Well, Pele, do you have any weapons on you? Pele stands up and moves to the sidecar. Theo, please. And Theo hands the birch and bone hunting rifle and the box of ammo. And Pele looks at Sedna, pulls the 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 bolt back on the rifle and slots in a piece of ammo and then puts the slide back. I need you to understand, Sedna. You may have certain feelings to how the world works, how it moves, how it attunes itself to those that sit above us. But... Though you have those feelings and those needs, those actions have consequences. Do not take this as me chastising you. I agree with you in many ways, more ways than one. I sometimes think of the quiet moments when the rest of you are sleeping. Jasper has a playbill resting upon his face. Theo is giving calculations in their sleep. And I just have those quiet moments to myself. And I just sit back, have a bowl of cereal, and ruminate on all the wrong that's been done with me. And I... Take a look at you, Sedna. Do you realize that when you sleep, you don't do anything? You lie still like the dead. It doesn't seem to be a care or a worry in your brain. 
I even sometimes place a little marshmallow underneath your pillow, hoping that if there's anything going in there, any bad thoughts, it's collected in that marshmallow. And then when we leave where we're camping or staying for the night, a little bird will come down and we'll pick it up. And all those bad thoughts, all those bad feelings get congregated within that stomach of the bird and it twists it and makes it vile and evil and destroys it. But you are left pure. Imagine that that is that bird. Would you like me to do the honors or would you? And Paley's going to hold out the rifle. I will reach out and take the rifle out of your hands. I think I'm holding it a little awkwardly. I don't think I'm very comfortable with this kind of weapon, haven't really used them before. But I, I don't know, gun stuff. Cock the gun and. Yeah, you just you can just move yeah. the, the safety off. It's already been loaded, so you just move the yeah. safety off. And I, I point it at this this monstrosity that is very slowly clambering towards us and I pull the trigger. The shot is is loud and I don't look to see what happened to this this angel, this creature. I Let's just turn see. and hand the gun back to, to Pele and say, maybe the reason I don't toss and turn while I sleep is because I don't have any regrets. I think Not before we get to that moment, I want to see if you actually are able to defend yourself from the creature. Yeah. This is going to be a revelation move with vitality because of the kickback of the gun. And I'm putting you at disadvantage as well. What are you afraid is going to happen if you fail right now, Sedna? Oh, I'm going to miss it. It's going to look really uncool. <laughs> and it's worse than that. The thing will clamor down and add you to its gestalt. So let's go ahead and roll with vitality if you're okay with that. Otherwise, you can still run. <laughs> and this is still disadvantage, yeah? Still disadvantage. Yeah, I'm, I'm rolling for it. I want to shoot mm. this thing. I'm unless gonna... Pele has a, unless that's an item of Pele is on the altar and you want to mark that. That is an item. So if you, it, yeah. if you mark it, Pele, you can, that'll, that'll, that'll I'll mark it, it 2d6. Thanks. Worth it. Thanks, Pele. All right, that's another seven. You fire the rifle. A weird amalgamous slurry of baby brains and organs gets blown out the back of the bulk of this thing and it just slumps back down into the pit. The ditch looks something like a grotesque mass grave now. Clues. <laughs> Pele and Sedna, you get to both define one for the journey move. I will, I mean, there's no further complication. Uh, that's, that's, that's the whole move, it's the whole of it. And I will give you a clue from kicking over the shrine. Let's do that real quick. You are near enough to the whisper planes, I think for this to have some valence. But when you kick over the shrine, you have to you have to follow up on this after you're done with this like horror in the ditch but you notice something strange and now when you follow up on it you see that on the ground here in this woods is a pine cone filled with meat a quivering pine cone filled with meat You get to define another clue as well. And here we will put the group together. Oh, you get to clear a condition also, Sedna. Uh, can I, after Sedna hands back the rifle and everything and says, maybe I don't have regrets, mm -hmm. um, Haley ruminates on that and hands the rifle back to Theo, or not Theo, 
uh, and grabs that reap and sew machete uh, and turns and looks at Sedna and goes, if your conscience is so clear, then I'll let you know, Sedna. I have no qualms with cleaning up after your messes, as long as they're good messes. And then we'll trudge down into the ditch and then begin severing and getting ready to clean up that mess. Mm. Good times on the road. I love it. Be thinking of what your clue is that you find. And what condition did you clear, Sedna? I cleared disgusted. Okay. Fantastic. Because I think I am still overconfident, obviously. I just said I don't have any regrets. That's obviously not. That can't be mm. true. Uh, and this is what gods do is... Oh yeah, Still, yeah uh, that's hard. To, that's hard to shake. Yeah, 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 that's a hard one to shake. Okay, now I think I want to put the rest of the group together at Alm. I think it's early evening. Uh, you all can catch lunch at the Burger Finger if you want, or you can go get lunch somewhere else. But in any or dinner rather. But in any case, the last thing we saw, Jasper, you were chatting up this Ellis Hunter. He's he's being kind of a pest, Jasper, or maybe not. I don't know. Maybe you love it, but he wants to know all your tips about being on stage. He wants to hear about like. You know, like he wants to hear about like, you know, how you got into the business of acting and all this sort of thing. Right. And and he's just like he's there just like learning and, and soaking up all of your wisdom. And he does ask at one point, would I have to become a follower of the Watcher in the Wings? To be an actor? No. Oh, you, unless you wish to be. Well, I just uh, I didn't know if all actors followed the Watcher in the Wings, or if, or, or if it was just monologists who do. No, it's not part of the territory, as it were. It is, dare I say, exceptionally cliche to be an actor who worships the Watcher in the Wings. Oh. It's more of an acknowledgement, a self-metatextual joke that I am indeed a performer upon the stage, but the Watcher does not simply belong to the concept of the theater. The Watcher watches no matter the form. You don't have to be a, a worshiper of the Watcher to be a good performer. It's just the most honest performers are. Nice. And Theo, you've been uh, maybe making friends with Heston uh, at the Burger Finger. And Sedna and Pele come rolling up, joining the crew. The gang is all back together, mm -hmm. all four of you, here at the end of all things. What's the clue that you all settled on, Pele and Sedna? I think when we are dealing with this mess, well, mostly Pele, uh, is dealing with this mess, there's a, a name tag that was set on the shrine, a name tag that uh, for um, they of the much too soon. Hmm. And it says the name Jerry. And underneath it, it says Fading Sperry and Freight. Hmm. So somebody has left a name tag of one of the workers hmm. for the freight company on this shrine that is now kicked over. Hmm. Let's just put you all together um, in Alm. Maybe hanging out in Town Hall for now. Mm -hmm. Role play. Ah. Haley. Pele has a big smile on their face and goes, Theo, it's so good to see you. And even like stomps up and like picks Theo up in a hug. Oh, 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 okay. We're doing this now. Oh. Sets you down. How fair are you? Uh, could be better. Uh, Jasper uh, has... I wouldn't describe gained an ability, but more or less he's using his god in an unusual manner. Jasper enters the room with, uh, uh, what's his name? Why have I already forgotten it? I wrote it down. Alyuishis. 
Nope. The, nope. The, Aiden, Aiden Pataki. Yeah, Aiden Pataki. Pataki. Thank you. Yeah. I wrote that down somewhere. Oh, oh it was on the yeah. He yeah. walked enters with Aiden Pataki. Um, it was. Hello, everyone. Good to see you. I've heard you've arrived. Uh, this is Aiden, a new dear friend of mine. Fellow... Are these more of your creations? No, Aiden. No, no. These are my fellow custodians, traveling companions, wayward wanderers upon the road that we call the stage. Aiden here is a is a is a follower of my work. I'm gonna look at Theo. Creations. It, you know how gods have domains and whatnots, and they have the associations with things. Some or uh, some gods eat things, but other Theo, gods... Theo, Theo, we have no time for your sermon on your dedication to the various divine aspects of your existence. We have an assignment to complete. I know that the work of a pox martyr is taxing indeed, and indeed you do offer great words of alleviation to the suffering, uh, but for the time being, there is work to be done. Sedna, Pele, you've arrived at just the right time. Things are going all sorts of pear-shaped here. Aiden Pataki, it is a pleasure to meet you, and I'm just going to stick out a big meaty hand to Aiden and shake it with both hands and go, it's funny that you mentioned creations, Aiden. I too have made a creation, uh, something to help me along the road. Uh, Theo, can you join us, please? Uh, hey, what? Well, stumbling into the burger finger is just this scarecrow Theo. That Wait, it moves? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the thing is that it like slinks around. It just looks like a just like stumbles in and looks all wonky and weird. It's I feel like that was the big reveal. I don't realize. I didn't realize <laughs> yeah. it was animated. Yeah, no, yeah, no, it was it definitely <laughs> big, last that thing, moved. That was inanimate uh, for the most of last session. So now yes, it was. By, yeah, so now yeah. that's a, that's an actual jump scare. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just like you just hear the the bell ring of the burger finger and just. The dried gourd that has the painted Theo head moving around like a baby in a baby carrier, just like lulling the head around, bobbleheading all over the place, and stumbles up and then just puts a shoulder uh, onto like Pele's forearm because it is short. <laughs> it's not <laughs> quite it, it, with with Theo's height. By the great amphitheaters of old, what in damnation is that, Pele? Please, no need to be so rude, Jasper. This is. Theo. It's not. Well, I reckon not Theo would be much more appropriate. Uh, you are Theo Solomon, but on my travels to link up with Sedna on her assignment, I found myself missing your companionship. And, well, I decided to pass my time in a way that was taught to me by my elders. And that was uh, weaving the wheat together to make a associate. Uh, Jasper's head just turns ever so subtly towards Theo with a bemused quirk in his brow and a look that can only be interpreted as, you see, I'm not the weird one. Uh, I think, I don't, I think Theo just gets up from the table and straight up just leaves at this point. <laughs> well, welcome, Theo. He looks over at Sedna as well and being like, honestly, our Theo has been dreadfully impetuous as of late. I'm getting, I'm beginning to worry that the stress of the job is getting to them. You've created somebody? We all create in our own little ways, do we not? Not somebody, it's a scarecrow. You're acting like I created life or something. Oh no, I'm not worried about Theo. Other Theo, not Theo. I'm not worried about the scarecrow. You made this... a friend, that's different. <sighs> Jasper making people is very, very different. This is the thing I've been trying to tell, not just you four, but indeed, well, you three, but the rest of the world for almost my entire life. Words have power. Every word you utter is weighted down by some sort of importance. People always assume that to be metaphorical, truth is the most divine certainty in all of existence, Sedna, and people really ought to take that a bit more seriously. So it should not come as entirely a surprise that yes, indeed, by being passionate and being a true... <sighs> performer and delivering things so earnestly and presenting thoughts to this 
world of ours, that they could even manifest in ways that the gods deign to be fitting. You're beginning to do that thing that you do where you say things that I don't quite comprehend because you believe that you're of a higher knowledge level than myself. I'm going to lean down to not Theo. Please let me know everything that they say. I'm going to go check on Theo. Stay. And the Scarecrow will be like, Well, I don't need to tell Aiden to stay. He just does what he wants. Isn't that right, Aiden? Uh, I'm sorry. I was just thinking about how only hours ago I was floating through an inky black star flecked void searching for the divine spark that would give me life. And I reached and out my hand and found it. And indeed, he looks at, like over at Sidna, like gesturing to uh, uh, Aiden and being like, and Aiden, what are you now that you've been made manifest? What is your role? Lorry driver? That is correct, Aiden. Splendiferous. How are you, Sedna? You look good. Did you do something with your hair? And Sedna's just speechless. Just You leave for five minutes. Leave you alone. For what? A couple of days? And this is what you've done. I feel like you're suggesting that I've done something maliciously. This was... Oh, Aiden, um... Uh, I'm feeling like we've all been a bit excited. Could you go grab us all some, some, some glasses of water, perhaps? I feel like hydration is very important to do our duties as operatives of biased. He, he leaves. He looks at Sedna and says, Sedna, this was a complete fucking accident. You see, I was not doing anything different than normal. I was simply going about the investigative course of my duties, and I decided to take a new tactic, which was to say I thought... What if I adopted the mindset of um, of someone present during a divine event? I found a crashed um, lorry that very clearly the drivers had been killed in some sort of, I don't know if it was a saint or a local god, I, I can't say, but there was just a lot of honey involved. Very sticky business, no pun intended. And I decided, okay, well, instead of, there was no one to talk to. I heard that said now. There was no one to talk to, and there was really nothing I could discern, and I understand that I couldn't necessarily study the scene and learn everything, so I thought, new approach. I am a believer in the method of the character work of inserting my mind into a role. I decided to try the investigative methods of, if I try to get in the mind of one of those drivers and assume the persona and enter that yes, role... Yes, yes, I get it. You came up with an idea... You acted on the idea, and then Aiden became a thing. How do you know he's not a saint? Oh, he's How definitely... How do you know he's a person? Um... Just vibes, Can really. Can you trust your God? <laughs> Just vibes. That feels like a good cut. I, I, Pele, you said you were going after Theo? Indeed. Take it away. Yeah, I think Theo is just moving out of, like, the burger finger, just completely baffled by both Jasper and Pele creating life, I guess. Uh, uh, Theo, what, 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 why are you... Theo... I don't mean to speak to you down to you or anything like that. We are on the same level. We're both adults, but why so petulant? I, I... There... I can understand wanting to make your mark on the world. But you're really not, you're meant to be beacons through which divine will works through you and not to make your own molding. Theo, 
First off, you look peckish. It seems that the burger finger hasn't stuck with you. Uh, might I allow you to test? This is a new flavor. It's it's boomberry crunch. I think you might enjoy it. I'm going to hand over a box of cereal and close the briefcase. I yeah, sure. I'll I'll I'll, I'll eat that. Uh... And then the Theo just like tears at the box instead of like I imagine you try to offer a bowl and some milk. I, Theo's just eating straight out of the box, uh, dry cereal. Uh, take the condition jolly. You may clear that at any time to get advantage on a single roll, but afterwards you gain the condition empty. <laughs> You're eating my wares. <laughs> eating the wares. Eating, eating the wares. Um. It. Uh. Question for you, uh, Wes. Is Jolly a physical uh, uh, condition, or is it just emotional? It's, emotion uh, it's emotional. It's emotional. And then yeah. empty turns into a physical... I think it turns into a physical condition. Mm -hmm. afterwards. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. Maybe maybe, maybe you're, maybe you're, maybe you're right. Uh, maybe I'm just getting... Worked no, 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 no. Nothing. Theo, I, I don't know what your interaction has been with Jasper and this Aiden Pataki. You need to... I think you misunderstand. I have not created life. Not Theo is is the filament, the 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 lens for which my beacon of light to shine through. The not Theo is a scarecrow, a tool utilized for work. Why we are. We are all just tools made for work, myself included. I respect you, Theo, and I respect your work. And if it suits you better, I've made this same promise to Sedna. I can be a tool for you to put your work forward into this world as well. I have no misgivings or no pre- wild notions that I am a creator and that is my creation. It is simply something that I have made. I will strike it down if that's what you wish. Hmm. That does ease my heart quite a bit, Pele. Uh, you do show compassion compassion to your companions about worries. I had to fight with Jasper on just just let poor Aiden Pataki be a person rather than making Jasper into a god in his own right. And that's 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 terrifying. I I think I, I have a question because I've been feeling quite helpless as of late that I'm not throwing in my fair share of work, of doing active things. I can't really protect people. I just pick up the pieces afterwards. It, because, well, I do know some rituals. Anything. You can ask me anything. You can ask anything of me and I shall assist. You and I have walked through fire together, Theo Solomon. I do not forget that. Typically, monks like myself are mostly pacifists. I'm not sure if that's working out as much anymore. Wondering if like more firm hands would help protect those out in this world. Because it still bothers me what happened back in that little sleepy town. Theo, you do good work. Your hands are made for healing. And though you have that feeling that you are no longer peaceful and that you are leading down a violent path, make no mistake, what you do is just and right. 
strange cat over on the parking lot. I'm going to uh, bring Theo, even if Theo resists, into a mm-hmm. big hug. He will not put, for stocks. And put Theo on Pele's shoulder and goes, You are the mouth. Your words give comfort and your hands provide healing, but you still need those to protect and dole out punishment. Allow me to be your riding crop, Theo Solomon. I will be your sickle. And I'll have you know if Jasper or Aiden Pataki makes you feel uncomfortable, if need be, I shall smother Aiden in his sleep. It will be peaceful. But if it is such a blight upon this world, I will do that for you, so that your hands may remain unblemished. And we'll let go. Very good. Before we... <clears throat> I think you have seven clues, which feels like enough to resolve Bowered Companion, or at mm-hmm. least to answer the question. Um, before we take a break to go consider the clues, does anybody want any final scenes? These are good little intra-group scenes. Um, if there's any more I want to know. I think just before the camera cuts, I think Theo says, there is so much rot in those who don't deserve it and I can't hold it all. Will you take on some of my burdens for me? Just so we can keep helping people. Of course. Sedna, Jasper, you good? I want to have a little scene with Theo, but I think I just want Theo to hear some of my stuff. <laughs> so, Could do that. I, mean, I feel like, I feel we, like, like yeah. no. I feel like I, we, I feel like we can trade off. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, can Theo cure any of your stuff, Sedna? Sure can. Uh, uh, because does does overconfident or. This is what gods do. Count yeah, they're not physical, like go- they're not physical. Not physical. Yeah, they're gonna be physical yeah, conditions. I, yeah. I just take on diseases. Yeah. Uh, why don't you go pick up a disease or something? I can help. I'm in the burger finger. I just might. <laughs> uh, anything else? I mean, I would love to have a scene with uh, Pele because we haven't gotten to do a Jasper Pele thing for a while. Go for it. I mean, maybe a little bit later that day. Yeah, maybe. Or the evening, that, that, that evening. Yeah. Wes, mm-hmm. you want to set that scene? Because. Yeah. You... Tell me. Yeah. I think uh, Pele is taking a quick walk around the 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 whisper, you know, around around the area. It's not too. Um... I mean, Ulm is not too big, so I think you can do a, a walk around the area in, like, a very short afternoon. Um, so I think Pele even, a- like, asked if anybody wants to go along with them as they survey the area. I will happily accompany Pele. Perfect. It's been way too long. Absolutely. I look forward to your company. Hmm. And I yours. So then I think we find them like walking around the outskirts, you know, just on on air quotes patrol. Um, is 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 not Theo here? Uh you I I don't think that you can see not Theo, but I think you see not Theo He's like in about. the background, yeah. just mm-hmm. like walking about. Like I've told, don't don't be seen by normal people. Just you know, mm-hmm. you know, be around, but not too around. Indeed. Hmm. So. Dreadful business at the sprawl, then? Jasper. Pele. I witnessed something. (gasps) Do tell. You know how our friend Sedna believeth that the gods are evil and nothing about them is good. It is all wrong. I, yes. I witnessed the gods move through her. I have a feeling we're not speaking in metaphors now. Literal. Quite literal. 
Right, do tell. I made my way through the vicious and disease-choked land. Myself and not Theo, that is. And when we arrived, we came across a person who was familiar. They were placed there uh, to bring me to Sedna. Uh, fate would allow such things to happen. That when I arrived, I came across an elevator shaft. And the greeting was Sedna's body colliding with the ground, unyielding, splattered across the concrete, arm removed. In a moment, I imagined myself rending that tower apart, hands, bit by bit, collapsing all of the people that dwelled there in on rebar and erecting in her memory an image, a wire and metal caged statue. And just as I thought that, sparks, electricity, moved through her fingertips, as if coming from the very beating heart that is in her chest. The spark of life, healing wounds, reattaching limbs lost, replacing the lifeblood that's within her. She was reborn anew. Well, everyone deserves an encore. Fascinating. You know, I'm glad to see that Sedna seems to be acclimating well to death, or rather the recovery from it, I suppose. Mm. But uh, all the same, you, it's, been, it's, been, it's been a while, Pele. Uh, may I confide in you as not just a co-worker, but, but as, a, as a friend? Nothing would... Nothing would give me greater honor and ease of mind. Hmm. I'm very concerned about Theo. Not your Theo, the real Theo. Our Theo. Mm. The pox monk. Mm -hmm. Something... Something is... Well, I don't know how to put it. I'll try to speak around it and find the path and all the same. This you business... can be direct with me, Jasper. Speak plainly with me. I have not had the proper schooling that you have had. My friend, the truth when it comes to speaking from the heart is no matter of schooling. It is simply a matter of truth and passion. And you are a great deliverer of both of those things in abundance, I have found. That's why I enjoy your company and your snacks. Holds out and a by... box. <laughs> Oh, no, thank you. I am I am quite empty at the moment, and I feel that uh, it would not agree with me. Um, Pulls the box back. Thank you. Here's the thing. I'll speak plainly. This matter, this business with my new follower, Aiden, the being, this person that I spoke into existence, Theo has a bit of a chip on his shoulder about the whole thing. Seems rather infuriated it's funny to me I, I i i found myself and my feelings hurt i was decided to accept it as almost his own personal quest to to tear me down and make me feel bad and and try to confuse aiden further in his new existence tried to tell him that he put all sorts of strange thoughts in his head and that has made aiden acclimating all the more difficult but uh, all the same i won't get into it my feelings were rather hurt Thing is, tried to to downplay my involvement in Aiden's existence. Tried to say that it was only through the Watcher, and yes, indeed, it is through the Watcher's observations, I suppose, that allow these things to be created. That these things can be created. But I was the speaker of truth. I adopted the persona. I believed. Aiden into existence. I am the creator, but that does not put me above the Watcher. The Watcher watches, Pele. The Watcher needs something to watch. The directors, the writers, the creators must present the play 
for the watcher who watch. And I feel like Theodore doesn't get it, you know? And so what I'm getting at and what I'm saying is Theo for a hawk's monk, a, a, a reliever of suffering seems not to suffer anything that he does not understand. And it's rather, well, it's fucking pissing me off, Pele. That felt wonderful to get off my chest so, 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 so baroque like that. Oh my goodness. I love it. I think we're cut there. Oh yeah. Okay. Uh, well, I mean, I'm, I'm going finally. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know. I know. Haley is going to put one hand on your shoulder. Alex, can you please make the revelation move with presence? What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> what move is this? <laughs> what are you doing to me? What's happening here? Are we Give me answers, Wesley Franks. <laughs> I've just had two different people directly tell me that the other one is scaring them intently, and I That's need you point. to make yeah. it, make it, make. Point. I need I you to make revolution. a plea. Uh, uh, okay. Oh, I like that. I'm mm. sorry, Jason. I don't mean to take your job from you, <laughs> but Pele is just so simple that I think a dice roll is needed to to sway them. I think a veiled move will do. A veiled yeah. move. Okay. Okay. Allow it. What are you afraid is going to happen if you fail this move? <laughs> um what am I? I I I think honestly it's that um I will learn that you are not the confidant that I thought you were. That's good. Mhm. Mm mm -hmm. Focus? Uh focus or presence? Either or. Like, Jason <laughs> it's up to you. Yeah, I was about to say like what? <laughs> you're the keeper. I'm not the keeper. <laughs> I'm going to say focus. Okay, focus. I like it. Do I have disadvantage? Mm, let me look at your conditions. Mm, hmm, 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 hmm. Lantern, mar empty, empty. Empty is pretty dangerous here, I think. Possibly. No, I don't, I don't think so. 2d6 is fine. Okay, well, I'm going to mark advantage anyway, because I'm going to use uh, a woman in a blue gown with peacock feathers watching from a private box, box who visits me in my dreams. Um, I am... In, there is a lot of passion in my beliefs and the observation of that woman in my dreams upon the stage it is a divine driving force for me pleading my cause. Mm. That is a seven. Hmm. I mean, obviously you're going to be fine in the scene. Mm -hmm. I think that's great. I do think what would be interesting here, I think what would be interesting here is if Heston, the waiter, overheard the conversation, has become something of friends with Theo, and will go and report to Theo what he witnessed. Uh, that's fine. I think, I, I think right. even Heston, even like even Heston sees Pele pull Jasper into a hug as well. Mm, yeah. And it's a tight hug and just looking mm. over. And then the inner monologue in Pele is that Jasper's right. He has an important part to play in all of this. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, Jasper thinks he's the writer. But in fact, it is the other way around. Hmm. And Pele's brain is like, is like, I'm hmm. getting it. I'm seeing it. No, no. Um, writer's room. I don't think the motivation is strong enough. Allow me. I'm writing a verse. <laughs> <laughs> intriguing. Intriguing. Wild. I love it. I do want to cut over set now. Mm hmm. Sedna, you said you were going to go look. You told me in chat you wanted to look for Aiden Pataki. Yeah, I want to talk a to him. Aiden's later. at the library reading books about, like, how to drive. <laughs> like, he's trying to, like, trying to, like, get into his, his, his role as lorry driver. Please tell um, me he's highlighting the text in the books as he's going along. Oh, 100%. <laughs> yeah, 100%. I hate that. I already hate him so much. <laughs> So, what do you do? Mm -hmm. uh, Aiden, is it? He's like, 
Yes, yes, that is what I'm told. So what are you? <clears throat> he straightens himself up, squares his shoulders, tightens his jaw and says, I am a man. How do you know? Because, um, well, I mean, it's just vibes, really. But... <laughs> <laughs> Just vibes. No, I have flesh. I have fingers. I breathe the same air that you breathe. And I, um, I, 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 I am truth. A rat has flesh and fingers and breathes the same air. A cockroach breathes the same air. Saints breathe the same air. How do you know you're not one of those? <clears throat> Are you suggesting me, suggesting to me that I am the spiritual equivalent of a cockroach? I am suggesting to you that you are not a person, but in fact, something manifested by a god. Maybe I'm an angel. Let me tell you something, Aiden. I've gone through some changes as of late. Some life or death situations so to speak and from that i've learned one thing i've always known that you can't trust a god hmm. but now i know you can't trust what gods make either you can't trust what they do it's always bad it is always done without any sort of ethical or moral consideration because why would a god care about that so explain to me if you are a creation of a god why we should as people that deal with problems caused by gods why we should let you continue to exist He sets down the book and the highlighter. And he says, oh, maybe you're right. Maybe I'm not supposed to be here. Oh, I don't, I don't know. Surely I must have some sort of purpose, though. <clears throat> I'm a human person, and I know my purpose. Can I confess something to you, Miss Spindler? Sure. I don't even know what a lorry is. And you're doing the lorry thing because Finch told you to. The creator, yes. Aiden, how do you know if you're even a person? How would you know? I know I'm a person. I have memories and experiences and thoughts and feelings and a body, and I am not the creation of some random god. I wasn't wished into existence by Jasper Finch. The creator. What kind of god gives Jasper Finch the ability to create life? If you're even alive. Out of character, what are you hoping to accomplish with him right now? I'm trying to figure out if I can get any evidence that he is a saint or an angel. Uh, because if he is, I am going to do to him what I do to other saints and angels. Oh, interesting. 
Interesting. Hmm. I think that hmm. I mean, I think this is probably going to be the revelation move. Fair enough. With the stakes being basically like we're basically you're basically rolling for control of the scene right yes. essentially and so i guess what i'm curious is what are you afraid is going to happen here as a player really as a player i'm afraid that i'm going to as a player i i think that the thing that sedna wouldn't admit to but is very obviously true is that he is an actual person and she is going to kill him for no reason mm -hmm. in her overconfidence i don't think she would let herself know that i think it's worse than that i think you just commit the murder <laughs> in the middle of the library cool That's fine. and suddenly the custodians are completely torn asunder <laughs> this is this is really interesting this is going to be with um, insight. Um, regular dice. All right, regular dice, insight. Don't really have anything that I think I can use for this. So I'm just going to do. That's a seven. A seven. I've rolled all sevens today. He stands up and he says, I know I'm a man because I can feel the spark of passion lighting in my chest. A spark of passion for you, Sedna Spindler. I think I'm in love with you. That's how I know I'm real. That's how I know I'm vital. That's how I know there is real man blood pumping through these real man veins. I am yours. What would you have of me? I think Sedna just stares at Aiden, dumbfounded, and shakes her head and says, fucking Jasper Finch. And I'm going to walk away. <laughs> just walk away. Fantastic. Well, if there's nothing else, I think we will break to consider the answer to the question. I'll remind you, the question for the Bowered Companion is, uh, how's this God vulnerable? Your clues are turned back, painted on a shack wall, the effigy of twigs and broken glass. Animals are unusually friend friendly. You have this hammock uh, wrapped, like, um, uh, wrapped, wrapped around a body like a spider capturing a fly, the hiking boots, the backpack, etc a quivering meat pine cone, and then a name tag from the freight company bearing the name of someone called Jerry. Why don't we take 10 minutes? We'll come back and see how you do. Okay, so you've had some time to think about possible answers to the question. Do we have any? We have, we're kind uh -huh. of still spitballing things. Mm. Well, let's, well, kind tell me where you're at. What's going on? Uh... Currently, our last thought was um, the god is messing with the brain chemistry of the people and the animals around here. Mm -hmm. uh, because, like, we have animals that are acting unusually friendly around interacting with people, but then we have people who are 
acting like animals, uh, such as like uh getting like being tied up into like a hammock, like a spider, like wrapping up a fly and whatnot. <laughs> uh, as well as like just the idea of like them just taking off like their clothes, like taking off their boots and just wandering off into the woods and whatnot. Mm -hmm. uh, I think. I think the god is trying to like get the attention of like people to worship it, but it's not quite working. Mm -hmm. So like it's trying to just spread its influence in more direct ways. That's why we've been seeing a, a quivering pine cone of meat, because for some reason in my brain, the bowered companion is just a meat tree. I don't know why. There's nothing about this threat that says that. <laughs> the quivering pine cone of meat says that. The, yes. that's a pine cone if if let's say this this god is this quivering is this giant meat tree in the forest and if it has been starving like a starving animal it's going to expand its prey area right like you think about how carnivores i, I was talking about coyotes and how mm -hmm. they'll if they don't have any food they'll just expand outward and outward even if they wouldn't normally do that because that's what things do when they're starving so if this tree was starving if there wasn't enough for it to feed on it's going to spread its sphere of, of influence which is what animals do they become unusually friendly maybe if they're if they're not carnivores they might because if they can get food uh, off of people they'll start like going up into garbage cans and things like that which is not normal animal behavior but if it is yeah and if it is spreading out its influence that's probably why suddenly these roads are being overtaken that's why drivers when they drive into the sphere of influence are having their brain chemistry affected ha being tempted by becoming more wild by running off into the woods um yeah meat i like meat tree that's well, so let me, weird well let, me, well let me stop you there because we haven't actually seen the bowered companion mm -hmm. directly yet uh we did see them uh, at a distance with Jasper, and they appeared as a person holding a lantern. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> fish. And Angular based fish. off of the assignment, you know that they are um, they are ostensibly a god that like leads people through the forest. Um, wayward souls kind of guides them through. Mm -hmm. That's its purpose, according to that's what bias thinks anyway. Um, it is a, this god is not, is, is it's established it, it, in, in your favor of this weird meat tree theory is the fact that no one really knows uh, because yeah. the god has not been worshipped actively in a long time. And mm -hmm. so uh, no one really knows what the Bowered Companions deal is. It, 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 it biased is just making some inferences and some assumptions, uh, but it's a little unclear. And so I do think there's something interesting to be said about this anglerfish idea that the part of the god that we all believe to be the Bowered Companion is just the lure mm -hmm. to drag people to the meat tree. That's intriguing. But the question is, how is it vulnerable? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so is the vulnerability the fact that we know that the god, that what we believe to be the god is just, a, is just an illusion? Or is the vulnerability of the meat tree itself? Is yeah. that the vulnerable part? Uh, what do we think? Because that's I think the question. vulnerability is that it itself it's just a meat tree. Yeah. It is it is a stationary it's a, it's a growth. thing yeah. that is, so that you, is it's, vulnerable. That's its yeah. that's its vulnerability. That makes sense. And and yeah. I think and I think like, okay, so that's interesting. Um okay, so we just have to figure out which clues uh um yeah, help I'm thinking, with this. I think obviously the, the pine cone, that's the obvious one. Yeah, I think that's the big one. Then I think the um Jerry's disappearance might have something to like yeah. might be indicative indicative of the meat tree. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. Jerry was probably lured in, you know, if he was driving around mm -hmm. the area, if he was a driver uh, for this mm -hmm. freight company, then he probably just saw the lure. Mm -hmm. Is there something about where the, how the name tag was found that would seem to implicate this idea of Jerry is meat? <laughs> uh, well, it was found like that near that shrine where there was a bunch of like meat babies, uh, effectively. So like, 
It just seems maybe like the thing... baby shrine is part of the Bower Companion. Maybe something. It's all. Maybe it's close enough that it sort of influenced each other. Like like a little mm. sapling. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's grotesque. That's what, that's what the pine cones turn into. Uh, oh no, <laughs> the pine cones turn into the little. Uh, okay. That's fucking disgusting, and I, I love it. it. I love it too. Um. Okay. So then we've got two clues pretty well accounted for, I think, in that in that case. Um. The hiking boots and backpack, etc., might that might actually like indicate the uh, that might actually like give give lie to the the lantern carrying man thing, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know, in some way, but yeah, and the lantern carrying man, and we we discovered we determined that that's kind of the angular fish right. lure. But mm -hmm. I think what is happening is that this tree was starving because mm -hmm. of the the trade routes that were going through. People weren't just going out and hanging out in the woods; it's become more of industrialized <laughs> industrialized mm -hmm. area. And it, because of it starving, not having people come out in and out because of all these trade routes, there's a lot of fast traffic, people weren't paying attention. Mm -hmm. um, that's why it sort of spread out its influence. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where the painted on a wall shack or the shack of the wall to the turn back, somebody who was in the area and watched what they were standing outside of the sphere watched one of their party members inside the sphere be overtaken by this mm -hmm. and knowing you know gods do this kind of thing i imagine they probably painted a warning so that others know where the edge of this oh interesting oh maybe maybe that's just maybe that warning is just like like kind of your first like road sign of where the tree is actually located right yeah that could be yeah, yeah. yeah i think the hiking boots and backpack probably uh, speak are to that another well. way to yeah. triangulate yeah. that yeah triangulate mm -hmm. where it's at um that, that'll the, that's that's sounding pretty good so far uh what about the animals acting unusually friendly <laughs> um how might that speak to the meat tree that's part of the lure you know when you're mm -hmm. driving down oh it's highways, part of the lure oh good and you yeah, see okay. a bunch of like deer oh, and nice. everybody slows down to take oh pictures good Mm -hmm. Well then, what about the effigy? We're not sure about that one. Hmm. Maybe it's I mean, unrelated. I, I, oh, well, yeah. I mean, maybe like it's it, not an effigy, but it's it's a it's it's a it's a like a, a a trap or an alarm, not meant for that, but like somebody, the person that set up the turn back on the shack wall has set up little things of it's twigs and glass mm -hmm. to maybe jolt there. the person out of this kind oh. of like lore that they're in with oh, this. So if somebody crosses it, they yeah. can yeah. hear it, they'll know. Oh, I think also what happened with them is that they probably, if this thing is expanding its sphere, they probably ended up getting caught in that as well. Which would be why the hammock was one of those kind of like awareness traps, but like get caught in it and then just got stuck in there and then they died. <laughs> yeah. Oh God, that's awful. I mean, I, well, so, okay, <clears throat> let's talk about the hammock thing. The hammock's wrapped around a body like a spider capturing a fly. I, I get the effigy and the turn back thing as evidence of like, mm -hmm. Uh, of like okay one thing to help you try and get it with a tree is but also the effigy of the, the 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 twigs and broken glass what it's really meant to do is sort of break the spell right so there's someone out there in the woods helping people trying to trying to like help people with this situation um what might the hammock with the you know with, with the body or oh, something that looks like a body at least i have uh, a nasty idea i want to hear oh, it give it to us we're going back to meat pine cone and massive baby monster okay. yep big old uh, baby monster oh the pine cone as it grows into the tree that's where the baby monsters come from is that there it wasn't a hammock it was a cocoon oh baby that's monster. good yeah yeah that's good oh, that's, that's really good. good yeah that's really good there we go we got there yeah that's pretty good Ooh, painting maybe, mm, maybe you found like at the site of that shrine you found like a something like a shredded sack, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That recognize that, that looks like. And oh, we that's didn't really realize good. what it yeah. was until we heard the story about this. So the answer is basically there is this meat tree. There is this entity that that is trying to draw things to it to feed it and to so that it can seed and create more of itself. Mm -hmm. You've seen evidence of what happens when it seeds. 
you have seen its its lures. The Bowered Companion is a lure. The uh, the friendly animals are lures. Um, oh boy, uh, yeah. And there's someone out there, and 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 between the the warnings by the person out in the shack and the hiking boots in the backpack, you're able to triangulate at least where the meat tree is. Um, I love it. I think this is a really, really terrific answer. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a plus three. Who wants to roll? There's no objections. I say, Alex, go for it because you started this investigation. I did start this investigation, even though Jasper did very little investigating of this and just caused problem. I will happily roll it. We sure. love problems. <laughs> we love problems in this household. That is an 11. 11. Nice. Good job. I think we'll just fast forward a little bit. Nighttime, much like my background. You actually are approaching the Bowered Companion. You're allowing the Bowered Companion to lead you to the meat tree, even though you kind of know where it is. The Bowered Companion is like a cowled figure holding this lantern. It whispers in a voice that doesn't sound like words because gods don't speak in that in those terms. But this is not a god. This is maybe your first evidence that it's not a god because it is able to communicate in a certain way. It communicates in a certain way. It gently it gently guides, it speaks to your body in a way that suggests, over here, friend, this way, you look lost. Let me show you the way out of the darkness. Perhaps you're all on high alert for what ultimately happens here, which is you see the roots of the meat tree on the ground, popping out of the ground, the tips like caltrops. You were meant to step on these sharp bits. And who knows what happens at that point? But you see the tree itself. It looks like all the other tall trees, except there's something about it that indicates the truth of it, especially if you know to look for it. We'll paint the scene. How can you tell that that tree is the meat tree? It's weeping sap, but the sap is blood. It has a pulse. It mimics your own heartbeat. The sound of clinking can be heard in the wind, but it is not wind chimes. It is the bits of bone and gristle that have grown from the meat itself being caught in the breeze. It smells like an infected, skinned knee. What do you all do? Does anyone have a chainsaw handy? Uh, Pele sets down the briefcase, flicks it open, and then pulls out the bloodstained reaping so machete. And then, like, sets it in the ground and then unzips the tracksuit, and you can just see, like, a, a sweat-stained tank top under tank top there. And you see all of the little scars where there's bits of like i can't think of the name of it right now but the corn husk the sheaf and the corn husk that's growing out and it's been woven over like an armor and cracks their neck you hear footsteps behind you something crunching in the grass It's Aiden Pataki. Oh. He says, 
cutting it down won't do. What do you have in mind, Aiden? It's spread too far. It'll just regrow again. You need and... to fertilize it with poison. I read that in a book. Good job, Aiden. I think that this was my purpose. Aiden, you're my follower. I'm not going to have you sacrifice yourself here. Yes. You no. poison my body and nope. feed me to the tree. Nope. nope. You're my follower. Not going to let you have that. You were just born. Not allowing that. I oh. have in my possession, on my altar, a an elixir that dissolves concrete and melts steel. I'm going to hand it to Aiden Pataki. D don't you dare. Mechanically, uh, what happens if I lose my follower? Because I got him through in advance. I just want to be clear know. about that. Yeah. Well, it's up to you all to, as a group. To okay, yeah, just making sure. Here, I, was like, but... okay, I don't um, hand it. I hold it out. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think... I just thought of something very... I, yeah? I have some... I have, and I've very been... grotesque and very much inspired by Alex Garland's men. Oh, God. I know exactly what you're talking about. Please go off. I, like, I don't want to intrude, but I do have, I do have a thing that I could do, but I don't have access to it right away, and in fact that I probably need to be poisoned. I'm curious what Wes's thought was. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious as to Wes's thought, but I do, what, there is a backup plan with mm -hmm. Theo. You're muted, Wes. Mechanically. We can make this work. That, and if you're comfortable with this, Alex, because this is a follower that you gained through an advance. Mm -hmm. In this world of depravity, grotesqueness, and everything like that, to kill something that was born of righteous and holy um, deliverance, uh, like God provided, uh, is to attempt to mess with fate or destiny. Um, would it not be, I think it would be interesting, I'm fucking, I'm game designing on the fly right now, killing Jasper to put forward the custodian's assignment, would it not the Watcher in the Wings deem one of its creations should not be sullied like that, something be another Aiden Bataki be born from that, but depending on the role, it could be something twisted and vile. Like, if it's a miss, another Aiden Bataki does not grow. On a 7 to 9, Aiden Bataki comes back from the body of that. Or, or what, if, what if I just monologue that this thing isn't going to take root and grow? I could just do um, all the world's a stage to, esta to like establish that like, this fact of it is actually not, I, I can establish truth about the world. And just establish that um, your machete is lethally poisonous to it and will salt the earth. You know, I, I can I can monologue while you're chopping it down. You know, and like and and maybe establish a truth about it. That seems like just the the simplest, straightforward thing of like I can rewrite reality to suit our needs. That's true. Mm -hmm. I also have a move to infect things. So, oh, what does that move? Uh, it is toxic and contagious my new custom move that oh. I, that you said that looks right. good? Yeah, yeah, really uh, does. Uh, when you have more than three physical conditions, you have access to clearing conditions in this way. In addition to let it pass on to me, when you affect someone or the physical land around you, roll with vitality and clear a physical condition. On a hit, choose one. On a ten plus, choose two. It doesn't attract unwanted attention. The target doesn't become diseased. If it is a custodian, they don't take a condition. Your skin reveals the interconnection of fates in this in the form of clue. Tell the keeper what it is. I mean, I think that has to be the solution. I, right? I'd say that's yeah. got to be it. Yeah, that's it's a pretty brand fucking new move. I, I like that. Yeah, hundred percent. I like I, the, everybody having this discussion. Like, I like yeah. you all. Like, I like the idea of you all like discussing like what to do about it. Yeah. Uh, Our companions just standing there, like, "Hey guys, this way," <laughs> and. Yeah. And Theo just steps forward and do the die roll, Theo. Let's see how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. This is... 
Uh, fuck me, apparently. Uh, that's a five. A five. Is there a miscondition on this? Uh, no, because the, because it's just funny that way. Oh, very well. <laughs> I think as soon, like, so Theo, I'm going to take the narration. Theo gets down into the loam and you can see black ichor pumping through Theo's veins, dripping out of Theo's fingertips into the earth. But the meat tree has its own defenses. The roots burst up from the ground and wrap around Theo's neck and arms and legs and somebody can react, but Theo, if we go with this result, there's a chance that you are going to be torn limb from limb by the meat tree. If you're if you want to risk it, you can let one of the one of your fellows try to rescue you, or you can write a verse. Uh, I think I'll let one of my fellows rescue me. Ah, very good. I mean, Pele has a machete. Yeah. Pele, take it away. This is going to be the revelation move. What do you think is going to happen if you fail? Uh, and you can I'm, put you can put Theo in danger since Theo yeah. accepted this consequence. I'm afraid that I'm going to make a sacrifice to feed the crops. Oh. Which is, which is Theo. Mm. I think it's worse than that. I think um, this entire time, a group of friendly animals has been also herding you all closer to the tree as well and trying to hem you in. Go ahead and roll with Vitality. Oh. All righty then. What you got? I'm about to roll right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey. Theo's in epic danger right now, right? <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. I'm going to take a God Flesh Fragment and use that because I have them. I can use them just for things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of me chewing and using it, I uh, would. Could I use this to give myself advantage doing something impossible by uh, shoving it in Theo's mouth? I, how, I guess does it, how does it normally work? Normally works. It means that like I ingest a God Flesh fag Fragment. Mm -hmm. Tell me what the I tell you what the new flavor is. Oh, right. I can choose it to lure a specific person or entity to me, communicate with someone, observe another place or time, or do one thing that is beyond oh, human, human limitations. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah. that's pretty good. Um, I like that honestly. I think um, I mean honestly, I think you should just do this role instead of the revelation. Okay. Role. Yeah. I think that makes the most sense here. Perfect. Roll with communion. Communion, yeah. yeah. Perfect, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, I think almost like Popeye with spinach, you just see Pele quickly grab a god flesh fragment and then put it in and then... Uh, there's a breeze. The sun's out. Nanner num nums. And like somebody's like, Aiden's like, what? Do something. And then you just see Pele just reach hands into the dirt and try to grab Theo. Uh, that is a, with communion, a seven. Two and a five. So I choose yeah, a complication. Yeah, complication as well. Yeah. Uh, I'll take a condition. I've been, I've been unsullied. I've been pure mm -hmm. as snow right now. So I'll take a condition. Mm. I think the condition is going... I'm going to give you a condition called problematic meat. But you okay. are... But it's you are, fine. They they have pills for that these days, Pele. Yeah. <laughs> if it lasts for more than four hours, contact my local yeah. <laughs> custodian. <laughs> contact your local box monk. If um, your burger finger lasts for more than four hours. <laughs> You all win. The meat tree is destroyed, ultimately, from Theo's infection. Um, paint the scene. 
how can we tell the land is returning back to normal? Oh, the fog is finally burning off. The animals become skittish and afraid of Gen, and the birds, when you get close to them, they don't jump at you, they fly away. The roads seem less lonely. People are traveling through them. You see cars making their way through hitchhikers and whatnot. We're all welcomed by the comforting scent of rotted leaves and pine needles as opposed to rotten flesh. End of session. Mm -hmm. Collect rewards. Let's do some rewards here. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba. Okay. There's one I'm going to just leave off because you did not get that one. But the rest should be available to everyone. Read them off. An oil lantern woven from vines and sinew. It never goes out. Add it to your altar. A small item crafted from the teeth of an angel. Ask another custodian what that item is. Uh, the favor of the saint of the ever-turning pages in the form of a bookmark blessed with her visage. Um, a set of keys to a missing fadings ferry and freight truck. A vintage field guide to the Whisper Plains filled with additional handwritten notes. A crown of thistles and stinging nettles. I that? will be taking the crown for Jasper. Mm -hmm. I would like the oil lantern, please. It feels nice to have something that's not electrical for once. <laughs> I think I'll take the Saint of Ever Turning Pages. And I'll take the small item crafted from the teeth of an angel. Um... Alex, what is it? A spoon. Angelic tooth spoon. Got it. Mm -hmm. Does it change colors when I put it in the milk? <laughs> no, but if you put it in sugar, it definitely turn changes colors. <laughs> oh, I just learned recently in a Silver Versus game where I'm playing Sweet Jolly to Crunchy Playbook that there are these cereal straws. Imagine if that was like... Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah that it has the little Gross. flavoring and oof. <laughs> um you know uh yeah i think uh and also like maybe like spinach just sticks to it weirdly <laughs> <laughs> end of session questions did the custodians complete an assignment yes you did did you engage with a god angel or other divine manifestation yes you all did theo solomon did you undermine orders of your superiors or use the assignment to pursue personal interests uh not really like, not in the spirit of the question. Were you vulnerable with someone? Uh, yes, with Pele. Mm -hmm. Sedna, did you deliver the monologue? Uh, basically, when when Pele and Sedna were chatting and Pele or Sedna was going on about her thoughts about how... Oh, God, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Uh, did you undermine the orders of your superiors or use the assignment to pursue your personal interests? A little bit, yeah. I wanted to know about Aiden. I Aiden has nothing to do with this assignment. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's a good point. On yeah, whether that's or a good not point. He is a person or a saint. Jasper Vinch, did you tr struggle with your personal faith? Uh, was, yeah, in my conversation with Pele about like the Watcher watchers, but someone needs to create for the Watcher. If there's no one to fucking create for the uh, Watcher, yeah, you know? good. Yeah. Did you undermine the orders of your superiors or use the assignment to pursue personal interests? Pele, buddy, I'm real concerned about Theo. I'm, you know, and I was definitely planting the seeds of. Uh, adversity oh you're oh mind. you're definitely undermining the assignment yeah mm -hmm. or they the the custodians is pretty good mm -hmm. uh pele were you vulnerable with someone uh yes with sedna mm -hmm. did you make a sacrifice to feed the crops uh i almost did almost real did. close close there. real close yeah fantastic um if there are any end of session moves we can fire those off now i do think does anybody have any verses i have a verse for jasper you want to do it uh yeah, I mean it's it's a little long, but if that's okay for you guys, it's um not like not like terribly long. Don't mind me. Um yeah, oh sure. I'm gonna uh, I will need a I need a volunteer. 
<laughs> I need a vote. I, I need someone from the audience. To... <laughs> okay, Wes. Cool. So when uh, when um, interactive this, theater, hooray! Yeah, it's interactive theater. I'm so Here, excited. Wes, let me send this to you. Um, and I thought Sleep No More was closing. You'll, you'll know when to do this. I'll, that's all I'll say. Uh, on, and on this thing, anything that doesn't say, where are you? There you are. Here, let me send. Let me send you the text. So anything that um you basically do everything except for the lines that are labeled suspect got it got it all right gotcha so when you'll know when to start that all right so <clears throat> the verses of jasper finch act 13 scene 26 the theater is much the same from the desk at the proscenium, Finch taps the typewriter's keys with an exhausted but undeterred ferocity. The mechanical tendons fly upward and over in response, pressing their inky and angry truth upon the inserted paper. Letter by letter by letter by letter by letter by letter by a pounding at the door. Finch looks up, sweat dripping from his brow and onto the blue aluminium casing of the typewriter, but it does not stop. He cannot stop. The play unfolds as he writes the play as the play unfolds as he writes the play as the play as he plays as the... Enter detective and police, guns drawn and shouting. Detective, greater glottage police authority, stop typing, hands up. Police, ugh, the smell. Finch giggles to himself. The detective steps closer. Detective, I said hands up, stop narrating. Finch shakes his head. Uh, Finch, I cannot. This is the height of inspiration. To stop now would, to be accept would be to accept the death of the art. Police, what's this loon saying? Police, what's this loon saying? What is, how do you do that? Detective, he isn't doing anything. Police, why is he talking like that? How does he know what we're saying as we're- He's doing it again! Detective, ignore him! Finch, the truth manifests from the performer as the performer writes the play. The play writes itself to be delivered by the performer and the purest truth manifests from the performer as the performer. The detective steps forward, ready to take Finch by force. Detective, you're damn right I am. Last chance, buddy. Finch stops typing. It lasts only a moment before he must continue the pain of the unwritten too vast to bear within the costume of a man. He sees the detective rush towards him and realizes the scene must end. So end it must. Finch. Curtain. Whack. What follows is a fragment from the transcript of the GGPA's interrogation of Jasper Hieronymus Finch, hereafter referred to as suspect. Leading the interrogation is Special Investigating Officer Cyril Whelan, Whelan hereafter referred to as SIO. Why'd you kill them, Finch? They were bad people. They were critics. And I found them far too critical. So you cut off their ears and kept their bodies in that theater? To what? Sit and watch your insanity? One man's insanity is the artist's inspiration, officer. But the smell... Was by far the most inspiring thing any of them had ever put out. That would They would have been delighted to bear witness to the creation of the greatest play ever written. The comedy, the tragedy, the drama. All interrupted now. You really are nuts, Finch. I don't know what hoops that sick, twisted, false faith out of mind of yours has to jump through to justify all this, but it doesn't matter. You're going away for a long time, a very long time, and I hope I get the chance to flip the switch myself. At this point in the interrogation, a third party enters the room, hereafter referred to as biased. The specific words exchanged between SIO and biased have been struck from the transcript and are not available to be read. SIO eventually leaves the room, leaving biased sitting across from suspect. Mr. Finch, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Kenneth L. Slaughter, and I'm here to offer you a choice. Either you can enjoy the curtain call from your front row electric chair. Opens a briefcase. You can hear the sounds of ruffling papers. Or you can sign this and get a fresh start under our oversight. Transcript ends. Bravo. And with that... I want to congratulate you all on finishing the regular campaign arc. Next week will be the confrontation with the Institute 
and uh, we may finish it in one session, we may not. It's very, very action-packed though, so there's a good chance we will finish. There's not too much time to dawdle in that final confrontation. You have to kind of get to it. And so uh, I'm really excited about that. Let's go to Stars and Wishes for the session. Whoever wants to go, take it away. Wow. Wow. This session was so fun. There was so much interpersonal like drama and I don't even know where to, I don't even know where to start. Like I was trying to take notes, but I get so, I got so caught up in everything. Um the just vibes really. Alex, mwah, chef's gifts. That was awesome. Jason, your call back to it with Aiden. Amazing. That was so so good because I had forgotten actually that Aiden is supposed to be Jasper and just not and that that really brought it back together for me. So I, I really loved that. Um Wes Everything with Pele in this session was spectacular. The the marshmallow thing, that was so weird. What the hell? What is this? Perfect. Perfection. Loved it. I really, really love how you were you were leaning in on this this thing with, with what's going on with Pele, where he is, you know, I am a tool, use me as you will, because that's what the, the god that's what sweet jolly crunch tooth does with pele that's what he was for like in the farm you know, who's basically sainted and all that stuff so it really pulls this through line of pele just being a tool for the things around him uh in a, in a really interesting way and i'm that's my, one of my wishes to see what comes of that and i, I really like some you know pele being pele for pele's sake kind of reasons um that whole scene chaotic with you and Wes, that was so cool to see that that side of Theo, that I am not sure if this is how I want to be anymore. You know, that the big switch, and we've been building up to it, but having Theo say it out loud was very, very cool. And I'm excited to see more of this, especially with your new move, where you can cause people to get sick. That's so against the whole pox martyr thing. So I want to see what happens with Theo and how you know he deals with that as he goes through um alex that verse was spectacular that was spectacular it felt like that episode of the silt verses where the watcher in the wings uh shows up but just purely jasper finch flair like it wasn't a copy of that it was just that energy but jasper finch and horrifying wes you did an amazing fantastic co-read just reading that i yeah, it felt like you you both rehearsed it over and over and just managed to just pull it off. It was, oh God, it was so good. And I'm just, yeah, I'm really excited about everything. Jason, obviously the spotlighting here was really, really good. Um, leaning into the weird decisions that everybody was making and really going for it and really encouraging even weirder decisions. Uh, I think this is one of one of the coolest sessions I've ever played in games. So thank you so much for that. That was wonderful. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Stars I want to throw out there to also Jason on that note of like, because I think we had talked, I think whether it was before at the start of the session or like even before call of just like the keeper zero sessions where it's like the keeper doesn't have to do much. And like one, you know, Jason did do some stuff in this session, but like it was a very like role play focused, uh, like, oh, the characters are back together. We got a lot of interactions between them. That was the meat of the session. So, I mean, like one start to your pacing of like putting that as like the spotlight for like, you know, two thirds of the episode. Um, Cause it really felt, uh, it, 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 uh, it felt great to be all of us back together again and exploring kind of what's been building up over the last few sessions. That was great. Um, yeah, uh, West Star to uh, Theo walking in and, and, and having the jump scare reveal of it moves, um, which is horrifying. Cause I love to think that Sedna had been had seen that thing in his motor car and then it's just like, wait, that thing fucking moves. <laughs> there were so many great lines this session. I wish I took notes for them, but like a lot of just like moments where, and what I will call out though is also starring you, Wes, is um, your, um, you started when, when I was having the conversation uh, with you uh, and, and Jasper asked about um, the, the sprawl, we went on like, Pele went on a monologue about like rebar cages and all these things. And it was like, holy shit, that was a great monologue. I'm glad that this was recorded because that was genuinely fantastic. Um, uh, uh, chaotic star to um, uh, yeah also start to that uh, scene between uh, Pele and Theo of kind of like admitting some things and also uh, you and I have been leaning fully into this very adversarial relationship and like maybe like how it's gonna go so like I feel like 
Um, I was really satisfied to build off of your, uh, your conversation that you did and then have it echo with, uh, with Pele and Jaspers of being like, it, it, like Wes, uh, of Wes, you, you were accepting a role as between two different approaches. And then I thought it was ballsy as hell, but, uh, it, deeply respectable as a role player to be like, my uh, Pele is super uh, easily influenced. So I'm going to leave this up to the dice to determine how well and whose side I'm taking. I thought that was uh, a bold move. Not a lot of players, I think, will uh, allow what their character thinks or does to be determined solely by dice. So that was um, a testament to your just strength as a role player. Um, I mean, Amanda, as always, loved Sedna's uh, interaction with Aiden and just the suffering she continues to deal with and anything that involves with Jasper was really great. Uh, yes, also thank you again, uh, Jason, for uh, echoing into Just Vibes, really. <laughs> uh, I really got a, a, t a kick out of that. Um, and yes, uh, Star West, thank you for uh, being my co-star in that verse. Uh, you did the characters justice, so thank you very much. Uh, I'm very excited for the confrontation. I'm hoping we'll get to see some payoff to the um, hostility that's now kind of like brewing in some way. I mean, this might turn into a very blood-soaked finale. I don't know. I'm excited to see what happens. Um, and I, I definitely, you know, I, I want to get, a, I definitely want to get another, you know, we're going to do a dream move, I assoume, to get to, 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 on, on route to the Institute, I would hope. Uh, because I haven't decided, I'm, I don't know. Because yeah. I'm stocked with three conditions and I would like to, to maybe <laughs> have an opportunity to ease yeah. some of them up. Yeah. <laughs> I've been alone for a while. I should probably clear some stuff. Um, but yeah, no, other than that, my wishes are just like, I want to see this, uh, continue full steam ahead into the finale. Cause that was uh, a fantastic, fantastic, uh, kind of like pulling together of all the threads. Yeah, I have to second a lot of what's been said already. Um, I, uh, yeah, uh, star for that star for that verse. That was really incredible. That was probably one of the most incredible things I've ever seen in a role playing game, and it was just so fun to watch. And um, I, a thing that I've kind of come to in recent months, even not even like I mean, like it really, really recently, is this idea of the verses, Janus Mask, et cetera, that they, they can be such a powerful storytelling tool when the players take the time to actually script them out ahead of time. Mads used to do that back in Shadow Society days, right? And I loved it back then, but it, but I wouldn't say it was something that everyone was doing, right? Like everyone was, it was, it was kind of a thing that people just maybe sometimes did, but for the most part, people just kind of winged it on the moment. Um, but lately in my sessions, players have been coming to the table with the uh, with the flashbacks scripted out. And um, and so just as a general play concept, I really like it. Uh, I really like it a lot. And it's the kind of thing that I want to actually like, I think in the between book, I want to actually like put that down as a thing, like, you, you know, encourage your players to do this. Right. Um, so that's really fabulous. Uh, but 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 yeah, but that in that particular instance of it was just was just so good. Um, I really, really loved all of the interpersonal scenes between the characters. It felt like the right time to do that. The, char the characters were all back together again for the first time in quite a while. And uh, so it felt like a good time to let a lot of this stuff that's been kind of boiling up finally boil over <laughs> um, and let it have its moment. Um, it was just really great to see all these characters in this way. Um, it, it, it really, really, I mean, I mean, it really felt like a workplace drama, you know, which I thought was really, really, just really fantastic. Uh, so many good scenes, so many good, like, revelations about the characters. Um, I love seeing this change in Theo. I thought that was really, really fun and, um, and poignant and striking. I enjoyed I, I've 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 absolutely enjoyed the whole the whole Sedna arc has been really enjoyable and um and it's there's something like deeply ironic and entertaining about this idea that Sedna is like rattling the cage so strongly against the gods and like the power of the gods and wanting to be unshackled from the gods and then she meets up with the group 
and two of the custodians have literally created new life <laughs> you know like like, like it, it's almost like a big like middle finger to like send this whole like worldview right which you know there's something really ironic and really really great about all of that and i just really really love it uh love the the scarecrow thing because that was a genuine reaction from me i was like wait it moves like i didn't even realize that i was like what the hell <laughs> like, and so there's something really hilarious about like we 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 cut over you know the camera cuts away we see the scarecrow just walking in you know like that that's pretty great um the comedy of it and and the horror of it were, were in equal measure and they were really terrific um love the Aiden Pataki stuff um that that whole thing is really really fun you know there's a um I think there's like a there's a table of players out there somewhere who are using the watcher and the wing faith sheets very very like in some sense almost overpowered like moves to 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 like power game the scenarios and good for them enjoy have your fun however you want to do it but i think it's more fun when we get to see these moves firing off and causing trouble and causing drama and causing like in, inner party conflict and causing uh you know and, and 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 really like forcing the group to reckon with like these sort of like weird existential and spiritual questions, which I thought was really great as well. So uh, just stars for how that's been shaping up. It's really very entertaining. And yeah, as a wish, I'm just really, I'm really excited to see where this is going to go. This has been a just a crackerjack of a campaign. And um, uh, we may not be done with these characters. I mean, like, I, I don't think we're going to, I don't think we're going to play another campaign straight away. But I do, but but these characters are meant to survive for like a couple of campaigns, like the campaigns the, the it's all designed to have, they have a little bit more the campaigns can be a little bit more, um, you can kind of do more than one. Whereas in the between, if you get through one campaign, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're good. Um, one campaign arc with one character. So yeah, just really excited to see how the, the confrontation goes. Um, I do think it's going to be pretty action packed. It's a very, very action packed sort of scenario. And so that'll be fun. I'm excited for it. Okay, I gotta give the stars that uh, for stuff that has been missed, and I can't believe didn't come out. Uh, Jason, your baby monster noises, I have not heard that before from you. That scared the shit out of me. Uh, <laughs> uh, as well as uh, Wes reading my mind about the way I described the shrine, it went exactly as, uh, uh, as I foreseen, even though Alex messed around with it by making things moldy. Uh, I did not like that. Uh, Anti-star for you. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed uh, the scene with Wes. Uh, I was more or less setting up my uh, custom move uh, to be used, uh, just with like struggling with Faith, uh, questioning things with Jasper, sort of implying that I might use this move on Jasper at some point to give him even more conditions because he needs to suffer. Uh, uh, but instead, it, coming out of the scene of like, Pele offering himself to that move, which I found very fascinating. And just the idea that we jump scared like like twice the session with people having moves because like legit, like I, I knew that the scarecrow could move because like that's how the movie's written. And I like to look at other people's fan sheets. Uh, but uh, then I see everyone else surprised of like, oh my god, I'm like, whoa, what, what's going on? And then during the resolution of like, oh man, we need to disease this this to this meat tree, and I'm just like, oh yeah, I have a thing, and everybody's like, oh, then no, no, we'll do this, we'll do these huge complicated things. Uh, it's Jasper saying, oh yeah, I can rewrite reality, and I'm I'm just like, yeah, I can just disease this because I have a new custom move, and it just like jump scared everyone else, uh, even you, Jason, when I said you like this a couple days ago. <laughs> I don't remember anything chaotic like you have to, <laughs> like you need to like if it's older than 24 hours forget it like yeah i have a star um uh an anti-star i suppose well it's a star for for the uh the the whole um the whole shrine sequence was so terrific like all of that was really great and i love that like idea of like the next person in the paint the scene has to build on what the last person said you know that was a really fun way of doing it and so i like that some of them work that way um and but i particularly like how you all were able to work that shrine into the resolution of the assignment that was really good um that, that was that 
felt great. Really pulled it together. It's one of those really great moments when you're like, you know, when 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 the system really comes together, like mm -hmm. all the parts of it, you know. So yeah, uh, I I also have to give the star to you, Jason, about that of just like of just like oh yeah, well, let's let's go with this with the weird ass theory uh, because this has nothing to do with the assignments as written. Well, no, I mean, well, not as written, but like, but I think that you answered the question though, right? I mean, like, it was it was a legit answer to the question, and essentially, I mean, it's and. Like if, I mean, you can imagine the custodians going out there thinking they're dealing with one God and realizing, oh, that's not what's going on at all. And, you know, that's kind of what you're there for, you know? So, yeah, it's fun. Yeah, um, I'll be quick about mine because they'll hit a lot of stuff that I agree with. Uh, Stars, Jason. Um, this is something that I continually try to work with, which is like pacing. Um, because I, I always like, especially when I'm running games, I run my games, most of my games at 7 p.m. because I work during the day and everything. So like, I'm always like, oh, we're getting late, we're getting late, we're getting late, we're getting late. But like, it takes a lot of like control and it takes a lot of like, like a lot of patience to allow players the space to kind of like utilize scenes and kind of like get to a point where it's like, we have a little bit more to, and you always allow us to do that. You always like, give us room to kind of be like, well, we have one more thing. Let's kind of finish it up, wrap it up. Um, because I've played with keepers, GMs that are just like, no, I've said we're moving on. We're moving on. I am the decider. I am the, like, the king of the castle and everything. And like, you really do like keep us moving, but you allow us to have that space to roam and really get in touch with these characters. And, and like, I really appreciate it. Um, the, the, the rat, the, the, the baby king, um, the Child King uh, noise was top tier. Um, uh, also, like, you do a really good job of setting up things for us within the game that we're able to work off of. Um, and it does feel like a Rube Goldberg machine sometimes with like in this group particular, because we will take things from you or you'll take things from us. And it'll be like little minor things that we mentioned in passing. You'll bring it in and then like it'll just like hit my brain and I'm like. That makes perfect sense. Um, I also want to give a star to Amanda for that uh, for that Sedna and Pele scene um, because uh, it was it was very sad in a way because like it, you you bring such like a melancholy to Sedna that a lot of other role players would not be able to nail. Uh, a lot of other role players that I have played with and I've seen on like even like big budget like actual play shows would play that as a caricature and would just try to play her play her as like I'm the goth girl that hates religion and I don't like anything and I'm counterculture and like and like on the like at from, on the jump from the very first like session that's what you see with Sedna, but there's so many more layers to that. And you're really portraying that and you're giving that to us a little bit by a little bit so that we're not getting overfed by it. Where it's a nice long meal that we're being able to enjoy. Um, your portion control is excellent, Chef. Um, and then also um Alex, uh Jasper Finch um is uh terrifying, uh haunting. Um, and I'm also terrified of you in these scripts that you're writing. Uh, the fact of like you being like, I, I need a volunteer from the audience to go ahead and read this side with me. Uh, I was like, I'll do it because uh, I'm afraid and I'll I'll take the bullet for everybody else if it's something awful and terrifying. And it's fantastic. Um, we mentioned there was no recording. Uh, my my um, uh, history with improv uh, and everything. And um, it's always a delight to be able to improv with you and like getting that. And I get to flex a little bit of my own muscles and each of y'all provide that, that, that roadside shrine thing of like, I, I, it reminds me of this improv game called the machine where you, you, you add to each other, you have a starting point and then they do one repetitive thing. And then you add to that. And another person has to do another repetitive thing, but it has to work in tandem with the piece before. And it felt like that to where, even the mold stuff, I was able to take that and I was like, oh no, that's good. It spreads like mold. It congeals. It can it connects things and everything like that. Mold has a way of connecting and spreading. Uh and it and it was just really good. And it's so juicy as like as like somebody like me. Like like I just I just love stuff like that. Um 
And a star uh, to uh, you, Chaotic, for that scene with Theo. Uh, I love the journey that Theo and Pele have made in this arc of the of of a God Must Feed, where it's if they started from like coworkers who butt heads to now they have a very much a sibling connection with each other, um, and it very much feels like Theo is the older brother, and but Pele is the big brother. Who's like, you just tell me what to do and I'll do it for you. I'll, I'll beat up whoever you, you point them out and everything like that. You're my big brother. You point me the way and everything. Um, my wish uh, is when we do eventually like, you know, move on to the next campaign and everything or the next leg of this campaign. Uh, I, I hope there's a little bit of a time jump because I want to see what happens like within that time of how we've kind of changed and what maybe the custodians spent time apart. Maybe they got assigned to another team for a little bit and it did not work out. Like I want to see how that grows. We still have to finish the thing, but like, I think it'll be interesting. And I, and I really like seeing what comes of that. And yeah, that's where I'm at. I'm feeling great. Fantastic. If there are no other stars and wishes, um, I think we're good to go for today. We'll meet up next time for the confrontation. Bye, everyone.